is the best sporting clay shooter in the world. Maybe the legendary George Digweed or Olympic gold medalist Richard Folds. Maybe one of the top American shooters like Anthony Matarese. Well, we're about to find out because the world's best shots are at the E.J. Churchill shooting ground in Buckinghamshire to battle it out for the title of World English Sporting Champion. The ground is buzzing with packed trade stands, food and refreshments, flags and banners giving the event a carnival atmosphere. Teams have travelled from all around the world including Italy, Sweden, Jamaica and the USA as well as Ireland and the home countries. They're all excited to be here and some even have their eye on a world title. Here's former world champion Anthony Matteris. Uh, yeah, it's one of the b biggest each year is the World Sporting Championship. You know, back home, our national championship is a, is a quite large competition as well. And we'll be going over to the uh, World FITAS Championship next week. But this is one of the biggest ones of the year. More than 1,600 people have booked on to shoot the World Championship, not to mention the other events running alongside it. The Sporting Prelim, World Sport Trap and World Super Sporting. The competition is made up of two 100-bird courses, blue and red, shot on consecutive days. England team manager Phil Eastman shot the red course on Monday when the weather was making things extra difficult. You know, I shot the sport trap in the morning um, in, in the wind and then I shot the main event in the wind in the afternoon. It got bad, didn't shoot very well. Um, shot the second half on the blue course on the, on the Tuesday in all the rain, so um, not very good round for me but you know I enjoyed it so it's great. Now who's who's gonna win? Who's your money on to win the championship? Well I I had a little bet with Andy Castle uh, <laughs> before the event. I won't say who I put my money on but um, I'd like to see Sam Green win it now. Um, I think for what the, the weather he shot in and you know the score he put in it was unbelievable score. Um, so uh, I personally think now he's, he's the man to win it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a Browning shooter. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Talking of Brownings, what sort of gun and cartridges do you need to compete at world level? Browning's David Stapley says why Top Shots favour the Ultra XS Pro. Everyone likes something different, but I mean, purely from a sales point of view, our Ultra XS Pro range is really, really popular at the moment. It seems to have hit the spot with a lot of sporting shooters, purely because the, the amount of kit that you get with it, all the chokes and the the pads and the triggers and uh, the weight systems just seems to uh, hit the spot. And obviously it's a very reasonably priced gun as well compared to some of the, uh, the other big names out there. As for cartridges, 18-year-old AA class shooter Josh Poyser is a big fan of Ely. He picks his shells to suit the targets in front of him. So I shoot Ely Superbs, so I use their 7.5, 28 grams and their 9s. Um, I also use VIP 6.5s for anything a bit bigger. They're smooth, they're fast, and they just, they make you confident. I put a superb in, and there's big targets all around this place. I put it in and I know that whatever bird is out there, I have confidence that these superbs or the VIPs or the Ely's, they, they're, gonna, they're gonna break that target. And if I put it in the right place, there'll be nothing left of it. It'll be a, a ball of dust in the air. Out on the course, things are getting interesting. Sam Green shot a superb 189 out of 200 early in the week, and so far that's held the lead. Close behind him are Phil Gray and French shooter Charles Badou, both on 185. George Digweed has dropped out of the running with a score of 177. Richard Folds won the Super Sporting, but his 183 won't be enough to make the final for the world sporting title. That could all change with the international team set to shoot both courses over the final two days. Last night, England beat the Americans in the traditional Yanks versus Brits competition. Now they're out shooting the main event in scorching heat. The ground looks superb and the targets are flying well. We've tried to catch you out with, with middies and 70 mils and standards flying through you know, gaps and stuff, but no, he, you know, he's bringing you from up high, down, down low, with sharp stuff going away. You know, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's trick shooting, but he's thought about it a lot and, and he's caught you out with, with angles. Anthony Matteris says that the Americans used to find our targets harder than the ones they saw at home, but not anymore. To be honest with you, I think at one point in time, yes. Okay, we used to just shoot closer and slower. Um, but I feel like now we, we shoot with 
at home with plenty of distance and speed, and I feel like the, the differences are, are, are less than ever. Uh, I shot a 91. It was not particularly great, in my opinion. I should have hit a few more. Uh, one gentleman in our squad, one of the American guys on our squad, uh, Brandon Powell, had a 97. That was a, that was a great score. Um, should be 94, 5, which w what you should have there, in my opinion, you know. So just a few birds off. Yeah, and still a course to go tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, so only halfway. Yeah, uh, tomorrow's the, finals day. I've got the, I've got the, the um, I've had the um, team out on the red course today. They're sort of up and down with their scores a bit, but um, all sort of pretty much an average score. Um, and then tomorrow we're out on the blue. Um, and this time tomorrow we should all be done. So uh, we'll see where we all lie. Next day, as the England team arrives at its first stand, a thunderstorm rolls in and the umbrellas come out. It's not making the shooting any easier. The clouds soon clear and the England shooters finish the course in bright, humid conditions. Back at the clubhouse, the crowds eagerly watch the scores come in. Who will make the six-way super final? Sam Green's 189 still leads with the USA's Brandon Powell close behind on 187. Making up the final six, all on 185, are Billy Greenwood, Charles Badou, Mark Windsor and Phil Gray. The Frenchman hasn't made it back to the ground for the final, so the other five step up to battle it out for the title in front of a huge crowd on the smart British shooting training layout. They carry their scores with them, so Sam starts with a two-target lead. After an impressive display of shooting over three stands, Sam just has to hit his last couple of targets to win. He's done it. Sam Green is the 2023 World English Sporting Champion. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, it's, um, it's been the one to try and get. Uh, on the bucket list um, and finally done it, yeah. Yeah, I shot early in the week. Well, I think I've had rain sort of most days, but we uh, we had a monsoon. Managed somehow to go and put a, a 97 um, on the blue course. Um, I wouldn't want to go and do that again. Um, but yeah, it, it led the board all week, held the board, and then to go out in the Super 6 shoot off and perform and do it again, uh, it doesn't get better than that, really. It's fantastic, and to do it with the Browning Crown again, um, to win two world titles, the Fitas and the Sporting with a Browning Crown. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah, it hasn't really still quite sunk in, but I fly out on Tuesday to Hungary to the Worlds, so that, that's going to be next, <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Maybe well, there'll be some celebrating. Today. Yeah, hopefully, i have a couple of beers when I get back. Fantastic. Cheers, Absolutely. thank you. You can find full results for the World English Sporting and the Associated Championships on the CPSA website. For more about Browning guns like the one Sam uses, go to browning.eu and for Ely cartridges, see elyhawklimited.com.